Good morning. For eight weeks, we have been building up step by step to a place in consciousness where we may avail ourselves of all that exists in the infinite omnipresent consciousness the divine or universal consciousness which we are learning constitutes individual consciousness yours and mine nothing can ever take the place of the master statement that Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. You must remember that out here in space, there is no such thing as two times two is five. Out here in space, there are no errors. There are no evils. All error, all evil of any nature, exists only in not knowing the truth. If you do not know the truth of mathematics, if you do not know the truth of uh, scientific formulas, if you do not know the truth of the principles of inventions then of course error regarding these fills your thought there is an absence of wisdom an absence of knowledge and in this absence of knowledge exists the only error there is therefore the only way of overcoming the errors on any subject is by knowing the truth by knowing the truth you are made free now where do we find mathematical formulas scientific formulas principles behind inventions principles of art music where do we find these where can we search for them is there any place out in space where they're to be found you must ponder you must think of these things if you today wanted a new mathematical formula or if you wanted a new invention a new form of art or music where would you go for it I don't mean to copy somebody else's idea In music, they call that Tin Pan Alley. That's a definite place where you can go and find all of the other fellows' tunes and copy them. But actually, if you are intent on composing a piece of music, where would you go? And the only place really would be within yourself you would have to turn within why why do you have such knowledge no 
at the moment you are ignorant then why turn within and the reason is that within you you have access to the infinite through your own mind or consciousness awareness you have access to the infinite even if you are sitting in your home or office or public library or church wherever you may be you can close your eyes and tune into the infinite it makes no difference what you may wish as long as it is in the realm of the mental or spiritual you can turn within and then what you bring forth from within you can externalize in mental or material form as the need may be in the form of a machine in the form of a formula in the form of an invention in the form of a discovery in the form of a composition but before it can be made to appear externally you have to go within for the principle for the awareness for the understanding and the reason you must always have before you as you close your eyes through your individual consciousness you have access to infinity now in our present work we are thinking in terms of the spiritual and therefore we are apt to think in terms of men like Lao Tzu or Buddha Moses Elijah Isaiah Jesus Shankara and we say to ourselves where did these men get their great spiritual wisdom their great spiritual power a wisdom that translated into manuscripts has come down through 2500 3000 years of time we could go back of course into Egypt where we find some of these principles dating back to three to four thousand years BC For those of you who have seen the pyramids of Egypt and the temples know that some of the great architectural wisdom building wisdom that today we would consider to be of importance existed 4,000 years BC how then did these men attain that wisdom where from this is the day before books before libraries before research the answer is these men had access to the infinite through their own consciousness they turned within and they tuned in and they brought forth the spiritual wisdom by which we live today Lao Tzu 500 BC brought through the principle of non-resistance he gave the illustration of a stream of water running water meeting with obstructions it gets by every one of those obstructions sometimes by going over sometimes by plowing under sometimes by going around but always without struggle 
the stream of running water finds its way past all obstacles. Buddha gave to the world probably the greatest principle that has so far been revealed to the world. That has to do with the illusory nature of appearances. The illusory nature of what we call material and mental forces and powers. So that man could live absolutely free of the fear of sin, disease, death, or poverty. Just through the realization of this one principle brought forth by Gautama from the Buddha mind, the universal mind, the divine mind, or consciousness, just by a simple act of meditating. He had already discovered that there was no use in starving oneself, fasting, dieting. He had already discovered there was no use of asceticism in any form, sacrifices, and therefore he could sit quietly and peacefully, meditate. And do not be mystified by that word meditate or meditation. It merely means that in quietness and in confidence he turned within himself and realized that through his own consciousness he had access to the infinite And since he was seeking to discover how to rid the world of disease, of sin, of poverty, he received the great wisdom, these really do not exist. They exist only in the mind of men as illusory concepts. They have no power, they have no presence, they cannot maintain themselves or perpetuate themselves because they have no law. There is no law of error, no law of evil. Therefore, relax. Be at peace and discover that reality, harmony, is ever with you once you have learned this truth. This truth makes you free of sin, disease, death, lack, limitation. Just knowing the illusory nature of appearances. And then the same consciousness that is revealing this principle to you will sustain the harmony of your existence throughout eternity. 500 years later, no, 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 even probably before this or about the same time, Moses had the great revelation of the name and nature of God. I am is the name of God and I am that I am the I of my being closer to me than breathing nearer than hands and feet I in the midst of me is mighty and so Moses discovered, again, in meditation on the mountaintop, in prayer, in communion with God, that he had access individually to infinity. He had access himself individually to infinity. And 
the great unknown was revealed to him something heretofore unknown the name of God and with the name of God the nature of God a presence within me a presence closer to me a presence which is really my greater selfhood so that the place whereon I stand is holy ground and not only on the top of this mountain where the revelation is given but you see later he proved that in Egypt before Pharaoh that place too was holy ground and for 40 years in the wilderness it was holy ground because every need was met not only for himself we think it a great accomplishment when we meet the needs of ourself or our families he met the needs of the Hebrew people into the thousands who were traveling with him their clothes waxed not old food was provided water was provided every day safety security through what and how the consciousness of Moses attuned to the infinite the divine so that all of God's grace could flow into and through the consciousness of Moses and become the law of safety security freedom sufficiency unto his people centuries later the master Christ Jesus also met not only his own need and the needs of his disciples he met the needs of the multitudes he healed multitudes he forgave he fed he showed the way to multitudes how one lone man did this do not believe it regardless of how divine that man may be he did it through access to the infinite knowing that he as he closed his eyes to the world of appearances even as Buddha did judge not after appearances close your eyes to appearances and judge righteous judgment what is righteous judgment it is the judgment that comes to you from the infinite and through your consciousness you have access to the infinite And so the master had access to Buddha's wisdom relating to the non-power of disease and sin because he said what did hinder you regardless of appearances rise pick up your bed and walk and he had access to the wisdom of Moses I am with you since before Abraham was I am with you and that's even before Moses was and I will be with you unto the end of the world and I will never leave you nor forsake you the place whereon thou standest is holy ground the place I prove to you that the place whereon I stand is holy ground because the power of God is here where I am to heal you, to reform you, to forgive you, to feed you. And this he demonstrated and proved. Not so that they might 
set up a worship of him because he warned them against that. If I speak of myself, I bear witness to a lie. These principles aren't mine. This doctrine isn't mine. This message isn't mine. This revelation isn't mine. It's the Father that sent me. I am the revelator to this age. This is what he is saying. There were other revelators to other ages because the Buddha revealed the illusory nature of appearances and Moses revealed the nature and the name of God and Isaiah. Therefore, there always have been, but I now am demonstrating to you that through my consciousness infinity flows so that I can heal multitudes or feed multitudes or forgive multitudes or protect multitudes not by virtue of myself but by virtue of the truth that I through my consciousness have access to the kingdom of God the infinite the divine, the universal, omnipresent. For here where I am, God is. The place whereon thou standest is holy ground. If only you close your eyes to appearances, turn within, and realize that your consciousness is the doorway to infinity and infinity stands at the door of your consciousness I I is the name of God I is infinity I is omnipresence I is omniscience I is omnipotence and I stand at the door of your consciousness and knock all you have to do is close your eyes to the appearance world Ignore it. Do not try to heal it, improve it, reform it, or feed it. Close your eyes to it, and I will enter. Infinity will enter. Omnipresence will enter. Omniscience, all wisdom will enter. All power will enter. All presence will enter. For I am here where thou art. And if you go up to heaven, I will be standing at the door of your consciousness and knocking. And if you make your bed in hell, any hell, I will be standing at the door of your consciousness and knocking. And if you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I, infinity, eternality, immortality, infinite wisdom, infinite spiritual power, will be standing at the door of your consciousness seeking admittance and your part is to know this truth. Your part is to know this truth that where I am God is for we are inseparably and indivisibly one. Now you're not knowing the truth of this about Joel, you are knowing the truth of this about yourself. I'll be knowing it about myself and I'll go a step further and be knowing it about yourself but until you have demonstrated it in some measure you occupy with demonstrating it for yourself then you will be enabled to demonstrate it for your family for your friends for your relatives for your students that is not all of them but those who are receptive and responsive and who seek you out. You are not to go up and down the world trying to save it. You are to let the world come to you and be saved. In the same way that while I, God, is standing at the door of your consciousness and knocking for admittance, you will notice that it is not breaking down the door to get in. That part is up to you. It will stay outside forever unless you open the door of your consciousness and realize 
that your consciousness is the entrance hall. Your consciousness is the door. Your consciousness then is the access. That's the word we're seeking, access. Access is the word. Your consciousness is the access to the infinite. And the infinite finds entrance into your experience through your consciousness. That really makes no difference how sick you may be at this moment or how old you may be at this moment or how sinful you may be at this moment or how poor you may be. None of that has anything to do with this because there is no power, nothing that you have ever done or thought can ever act as a power to bar you from God. The only thing that can ever act to bar you from God is your ignorance of the fact that your own consciousness is the access to God, to infinity. That could bar you. If you do not know this truth, then you're cut off. All of the people who do not know this truth are cut off from the benefits of this truth. And the only thing that can benefit from will not be tithing or sacrificing or getting on their knees and begging or pleading only one thing will bring this to them and that is to know this truth that I the infinity of being the all being am standing at the door of your consciousness and knocking and ready to enter when you open your consciousness. Now, this must make clear to you why meditation is the important part of the message of the infinite way, because how do you have access to that which is knocking at the door except by closing your eyes for a brief second, shutting out the appearance world, turning within and saying, Speak, Lord, thy servant heareth. To do just that is an act of meditation. To be able to wait with a listening attitude for 20 or 30 seconds is a further act of meditation. To do it three, four, five, ten times a day is a further act of meditation. Eventually to find that you can do it for two or three or four minutes is a further, deeper, richer act of meditation, but you build up to it. This is one way of life in which it does not pay to be too smart. There are those who finish four-year college courses in three years and think they have achieved something instead of knowing that they have been cheated. They've been cheated out of a whole year of unfoldment. All they've done is crammed a few more facts into a short space of time and cheated. They think that is education. Education is the opening of consciousness, the enriching and ripening of consciousness. You don't do that by cramming books. And in this work, it will never pay to try to skip a grade, nor try to hasten progress even by a day, because it can't be done. You can take a flower and put it in a hothouse and enforce its growth so that it becomes a full-blown flower before its time. But you know that it's not the healthy flower that the natural one is that has grown outdoors and has matured in nature's way. There is an element of patience and perseverance on the spiritual path 
because it isn't knowledge that benefits us, not even the knowledge of what I have said this morning. It is the practice of what I have said this morning. The knowledge is only the stepping off place. The knowledge is only a preparation. The practice, the ability to go within and realize, just think, through my consciousness, I have access to the infinite, the divine, the eternal, the immortal. Through my own consciousness, Schooling has nothing to do with it. Please remember that many of the people who have attained the highest degree of spiritual unfoldment have had very little of what the world calls schooling. Only one thing is requisite, and that is the desire to know God aright. If there is that within you, and the understanding that you can meet God face to face, that all of the God presence and all of the God power can flow through you to this world just by opening the door, which is your consciousness. Your consciousness is that door. I stand at the door and knock. You must open and invite me. Speak, Lord, thy servant heareth. And then you open yourself to infinity, to immortality, to truth, to life eternal, for I am life eternal. You open yourself to infinite supply, for I am the bread and the meat and the wine and the water. You open yourself to restoring the lost years of the locust because I am the resurrection. Though you are dead in sin, dead in disease, dead in poverty, dead in slavery, I am the resurrection. Therefore, open the door of your consciousness and let me in. If you abide in me and let me abide in you, if you open your consciousness to that I presence, that divine presence, and let it abide in your consciousness, then I am your bread. I am the meat. I am the way. I is the way. Closer to you than breathing. So, it must become clear to you that even if you cannot think of your consciousness as being infinite, please remember that you can open yourself to the truth that at least your consciousness is the door to infinity and the door through which infinity can enter your experience. I do not have God power, but God power can enter through my consciousness and be the freedom unto you and your experience. Divine power can enter your life, your home, your business, your art, your profession, through your consciousness, but when it does, it does not only feed and care for you, but as in the case of all of the mystics, it cares for all of those who come within range of their consciousness. Ah yes, you can feed the multitude, not by the infinity of your supply, you may not have storehouses and barns filled, but you have access to them. You have access to God's storehouse. And remember that it's God's storehouse 
that has filled the thousand hills and the farms and the ranches and the riches of the sea and of the air God's storehouse this is greater than having access to any man's millions have access to God's storehouse the whole universe and you'll draw forth treasures from the skies from the air from the earth and from the waters beneath the earth all by opening your consciousness to the infinite This is what the author must have had in mind with his book In Tune With the Infinite. This is exactly what he must have had in mind. In tune with the infinite. Attuned to the infinite. Open to the inflow. I and my father are one. This divine consciousness really is my consciousness. And I have access to it through meditation, through contemplation, through contemplating this truth. When I have come this far, I have another important step to take the infinite way had its origin in two words the little word as and the little word is. Actually, these two words comprise one half of the entire message of the infinite way. The other half relates to the nature of error. But one half consists of just two words, as and is. There is not God and man. God is manifest or expressed as man, since I and the Father are one and not two. Therefore, you cannot have a word and in there, or you would have two. But with the word as, God and man becomes one. I and my Father are one. then that makes all of God and man right here where I am so that I do not have to go to holy mountains or holy temples right here where I am God is and it is for this reason then that we can close the eyes to the appearance world and attune ourselves speak Lord thy servant heareth because I'm not reaching up to the sky to have God hear me. I'm not reaching out 2,000 years ago to have God hear me. I'm reaching within myself. That's why a whisper is loud enough. As a matter of fact, too loud. A silence is even better than a whisper. <coughs> Speak, Lord, thy servant heareth, without speaking it, without whispering it, just by silently thinking it. And opening consciousness, since that which is to answer us is closer to us than breathing, because of the word as, God manifested as my consciousness, infinite consciousness manifest as my consciousness, infinite divine life expressed 
as my life. Now because of the revelation of Jesus, this part is not difficult. You have all of his authority backing you up. But it is the next part that presents difficulties and with which you probably will have to contend within yourself until you reach the consciousness of it. And that is the word is. It's a very angelic word, but for a long while you're going to call it a devil because you'll have difficulty with it. What does it mean, is? <coughs> One thing it means is that God cannot do anything for you because, because God already is doing it. So there's nothing that God could start today or tomorrow. It also means you cannot bring God into the picture because God is in the picture. It means that you cannot attain harmony because the harmony of God is. And so all of these things that occupy the mind that we are expecting of God after this treatment or after this prayer or after this meditation already is. And so it stops us right in the middle. We cannot desire anything. We cannot seek anything of God. We cannot seek forgiveness. We cannot seek supply. We cannot seek healing. Because of is. God is. God is from everlasting to everlasting. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Before Abraham was, uh, I am, God is. I will be with you unto the end of the world. God will be with you unto the end of the world. All is embodied in the word is. And now what are we going to God for? Just God's impartation of himself, the recognition of is, the recognition of as, letting the impartation come, that when it comes, never says, I will do something for you, it says, I am with you. I always have been with you. I always will be with you. There is no such thing as past. There is no such thing as future. All is, is. What of the particular sin, disease, death, lack, limitation that confronts me? It confronts me only as appearance or ignorance of is. In my realization of is, the picture begins to fade. The illusion dies out. The illusory appearance dies out. Through the realization of is. The law of God is functioning. The life of God is being my being and your being. The life of God is just as much my being at 90 as it is at 19.
The law of God is as operative in me, through me, for me, at 99 as at 19. This realization stops death right in its tracks, stops the threat. This realization makes it possible that no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. None of the world's beliefs can prosper. None of the world's theories can prosper. None of the world's illusions, superstitions, ignorances, or fears can prosper if you abide in is. And do not seek to have God do something to you or for you or to someone else or for someone else. But shut out the picture in the realization of is. I am with you. Of course you have been taught to believe that because you have sinned that God hasn't been with you. And that never was true. And that never was true. Omnipresence is omnipresence. You may have shut yourself off from God because of these superstitious beliefs, but God never shut himself off from you. I have always been standing at the door of your consciousness and knocking in the midst of your sins, in the midst of your diseases, in the midst of your lacks. And at any time it was only necessary to look up as the woman taken in adultery looked up to the Christ, as the thief on the cross looked over at the Christ, as the impotent man at the pool looked up at the Christ, as the crippled man looked up at the Christ, as the leper looked at the Christ. It was only necessary at any time in your life or mine to look up because of omnipresence. Because of omnipresence before Abraham was, I am with you. Because of omnipresence, I will be with you unto the end of the world. And you may make a lot more mistakes in the years to come. Mistakes of omission or commission. That will not remove God from you. It may remove you from God temporarily until you have the courage to turn within again and say, Speak, Lord, thy servant heareth. I know that thou art closer to me than breathing and nearer than hands and feet. I know that when I'm in heaven, thou art within me. I know that when I am in hell, thou art within me. I know that when I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, thou art within me. And by opening the door of my consciousness, I become aware of thy presence, thy power, the infinity of thy nature and being. And then you're reestablished in God and God in you. All through an act of consciousness. All through an act of your individual consciousness. An act which no one can perform for you. Even when you turn to someone else for help, it is really an act of your own consciousness turning to infinity. And that is why you can receive the help. It is an act of your own. Every time you turn to one for help, unless you're foolish enough to believe that some human being has special powers, you are actually saying, I am opening my consciousness to the God that you have realized. And the day will come when my own realization will be so strong, so convincing, that others will reach to my degree of realization. But it will be through the opening of their own door.
We are mediators as teachers. We are mediators to those who have not yet attuned themselves through an activity of their own consciousness. But just remember, someday we say, if I go not away, the comforter will not come to you. Let me be the instrument, let me be the mediator for you while you are attaining the ability in meditation to open the door of your consciousness and be flooded by the Divine Spirit. But as you find yourself, probably at first in small ways, receptive and responsive to the Spirit, call for help less and less, depend more and more on your own admitting of the divine into your consciousness, the reaching of infinity, and call for help, of course, if you do not make the grade. And then eventually the time will come when you'll be calling for less and less help and finding that this principle is truth, that through opening the door of my individual consciousness, I have access to the infinite, the divine, the sublime. The creative principle of the whole universe functions as and through my individual consciousness. The whole love of God the entire love which God is floods my consciousness by opening the door. This is the function of meditation. This is the function of practicing the presence. All we are doing in this whole period is meditating and practicing the presence recognizing the presence and realizing that God has given us this access to his kingdom. Why did the master say, seek ye first the kingdom of God? And why did he say, don't seek it in holy mountains or in holy temples or in holy cities? Seek it within yourself because that's where it is the access to the entire kingdom is within you your own consciousness is the door now open it open it by a conscious act speak Lord thy servant hear it. the door of my consciousness is open to be flooded by thy infinite being, thy infinite spirit, thy infinite nature. Ordain me with thy spirit. Let thy spirit be poured in upon me through this door, the consciousness, the individual consciousness. We have had eight weeks in which to lead up to this point of opening the door of our own individual consciousness, that infinite omnipresence, omnipotence, omniscience may enter and then find outlet to all those who come within range of our consciousness. In these coming weeks, until we return here on March 15th, hear this message again through the tapes so that you have constant reminders and then sit a while and practice the principles. Go home and practice the principles. 
If it's too noisy at home, go out into a neighboring church for a few minutes and practice it, or a public library, anywhere, because it is the practice of this that ultimately makes the actual experience possible. The Master gave these principles to countless students, and many heard them, but only few evidently practiced them. Only a few could catch the fact that right here, within my own individual consciousness, I have access to infinity. when the still small voice speaks to you, it will speak using the word I, for that is really the name of God. You may not speak and use the word I as the name of God, but you may hear the word I as the name of God, as the very presence of God, spoken to you. When I say to you, I am God, it is not a man saying to you that Joel is God. It is merely a word of instruction so that you will know the name of God when it speaks to you. If I say I am God, I am a liar. When I hear the words, I am God, this is truth, uttering itself, and the earth melteth. Do not say, I am God, and expect any miracles they will not take place. Open the door of your consciousness where I stand and let I enter. And I will say, I am in the midst of thee. And I in the midst of thee am mighty. And as you hear this, it is so. Thank you, thank you, and I hope we'll meet again on March 15th.